planets were stolen with hostile intent, we are declaring war right across the universe, and you will lead us into battle. Right. Yes. Go so well. In this video, I'm going to look at all three endgame crisis factions in Stellaris, break down the ship designs of each crisis, and then which ship designs we should use to fight them. I'm also going to talk briefly about strategy and tactics as well in facing each crisis. Let's dive in. There are three endgame crisis factions, and in your game, you could face one of these, or possibly all three. Let's start with the first, and probably easiest to defeat, the Unbidden. The Unbidden like to tear a hole in your reality and then come through and eat everyone that's here. They are energy beings from another dimension, and their ships definitely look out of this world. They also have absolutely no armor. Their fleets comprise entirely of just shields and hull. They have three classes of vessel, a battleship, cruiser, and escort class. The battleships are the slowest with a speed of only 100. This should be easy to beat, you can probably get over double this with your own battleships, meaning you should have complete tactical superiority in the field. Their ships are equipped entirely with shields, they have psionic shields that grant them massive numbers of shield hit points and quite high shield regen. They have psionic jump drives, you do need to be careful about those. They will use them to jump behind your lines or just wherever they want to go, and they can be a real nuisance. In terms of weaponry, they are mainly equipped with matter disintegrators. Matter disintegrators at the longest range have a maximum range of only 70, which is relatively short. You can definitely outrange them. They are very weak against shields, but do high damage to armor and hull, and get a small bonus to larger ship types. For example, battleships are hit with 180% weapons damage. Even their smallest ships have quite low evasion. And so just through the technology of our sensors, we won't need to worry about having high tracking. So how can we counter them? Let's look at our ship designs. This is the first of two anti-unbidden class ships I want to show off. This is a cruiser. We are equipping entirely whirlwind missiles on this ship. They have a maximum range of 120 and entirely penetrate shields meaning all of those high shield hit points will be completely ignored by our ships. When it comes to our stern, I'd recommend going with a gunship stern, allowing you to have three more auxiliary slots. I'm not going to put any weapons in this gunship stern, however. Whilst I could pair my whirlwind missiles with marauder missiles, marauder missiles have a lower range at only 120. And that actually means our ship will end up closer to the enemy fleet, which we absolutely do not want. This also saves us on a few alloys, and when looking at our defensive components, allows us to add an additional shield. You want to max out the number of shields you can have on your ships, and then fill the remaining slots with armor. Shields are the only real defense you have against the Unbidden, because their matter disintegrators will chew through anything else with ease. Bear in mind, on higher crisis difficulty levels, at 25 times and beyond, defensive modules generally won't matter that much, you're probably going to get one-shotted by the enemy ships anyway. Putting an artillery combat computer on this ship class means that when we combine it with its high speed of 282, thanks in no small part to these three advanced afterburners we're adding, our ship with the missiles will stay at its maximum range, a range increased by 20% thanks to this artillery computer, meaning a range of over 145, that is double the maximum range of the unbidden weapons, and these missiles will rain death and destruction down on the enemy. In fact, only a few hundred thousand fleet power worth of these anti-unbidden class cruisers can kill up to 3 million fleet power worth of unbidden. It's really quite nasty. If you engage the Unbidden in a system where they have multiple fleets, be aware that the kiting behavior of your ships may malfunction, and then you might face heavy losses. The best way to counter that is just to bring more ships. If you're enjoying this video, please survive that like button. An alternative design to focus down the Unbidden is this anti-Unbidden class battleship. We put the Ancient Saturator Artillery on our X slot. Now this does have a minor artifact cost, so if you're facing a very high level crisis and you're losing quite a few ships, it might be better to swap out to the Giga Cannon if you run out of minor artifacts. Against the Unbidden though, the Saturator Artillery is just straight up better. 
It has basically the same average damage output, but deals an additional 150% damage to shields for a whopping 250% shield damage and plus 25% damage to hull. You don't need to worry about that minus 75% damage to armor, it won't matter. We're combining this with kinetic artillery to chew through those shields even faster, and then a broadside stern so that we can maximize our auxiliary components. I've put whirlwind missiles in that broadside stern, first off to keep our range at the highest possible level of 120, but also because they are very good against the unbidden. We are still going with maximum shields, and I'm adding in auxiliary fire control to increase our chance to hit. This brings up the saturator artillery's accuracy to 90%, and the same is true of the kinetic artillery. This will drastically increase your damage output. If you are facing a 25 times crisis or higher, I generally recommend this battleship design over those missile cruisers. This is going to engage at longer range, and you will suffer fewer losses. On those higher crisis difficulty levels, the main issue doesn't tend to be resource output, but actually ship production speed. The next crisis is on the completely different end of the spectrum, and that is the Prethorian or Prethorin Scourge. The Scourge have arrived from another galaxy, possibly fleeing a larger predator, and they're here ready to eat all of you. There is definitely no similarity between the Scourge and the Tyranids from Games Workshop's popular game Warhammer 40,000. And even if there is, don't tell Games Workshop. As you can see, the Scourge have a number of different ship classes with different weaponry. The very largest of these are the mighty Scourge Queens. The Queens sport both the Scourge missiles and the Swarm Strikers, along with a few little acid blasts. Scourge missiles will penetrate shield like any missile, but then deal less damage to armor. They also have half of the effect of torpedoes, gaining an extra 50% weapons damage per target hull size. So against battleships, they will strike with 500% weapons damage. Their range is shorter than your regular missiles and your swarmer missiles at only 90. The Acid Blasts are a medium weapon with a range of 60, dealing 50% additional damage to shield. And the Swarm Strikers are strike craft that will fully penetrate shields and partially penetrate your armor. On higher multiples of crisis difficulty, these can be absolutely lethal. We then have the Swarm Carriers, which are chock-a-block with Strikers, the Swarm Large, which have quite a few missiles, and the Swarmlings, the smallest class, just equipped with a single torpedo. All of these Scourge ships have absolutely no shields, but a large amount of armor, and, except for the smallest class, equal amounts of hull points. They are also equipped with regenerative hull tissue, so they will regenerate hull and armor over time. The best weapon you will have in your arsenal to deal with the Scourge is a Tachyon Lance. These anti-Scourge class battleships are equipped with just such a weapon. This weapon has a massive range at 150, a range we can extend yet further with an artillery combat computer, bringing it up to at least 180. They deal reduced damage to shield, but a massive 100% additional damage to armor and hull. In terms of the other weapons I'd recommend you put on this battleship, Point defense will be very useful in shooting down these Scourge missiles coming in to fight you, and fighters will be very, very helpful. These won't be dealing much damage to the Scourge except for their smallest ships, which do have quite high evasion at 65%, but their main purpose is actually to provide a target for these Swarm Strikecraft. Those Strikecraft should engage our Strikecraft first before they start engaging your capital ships. This is, in my opinion, essential when you're on a 25 times crisis or above, because those Scourge Strikers can absolutely decimate your ships if they're able to shoot you. In terms of other weaponry, I've gone here with Plasma Cannons dealing extra damage to armor and hull. The range is only medium and small, so they will only deal with ships that come close into range with us. But when we compare it with other options, they're straight up better than a laser, and you don't want to run any kinetic weaponry, or missiles to take on the Scourge. They simply won't work. As far as defenses go, there's basically no point in running shields. They have full shield bypass. Even if you are able to get shield hardening, I would still recommend you go with armor over shields. This can get your hit points very high before we start looking at repeatables. On top of that, I'd suggest putting in advanced afterburners. This should keep your battleships out of range of the enemy fleets for just a little bit longer. Of course, we'll go with our artillery combat computer for extra range, fire rate, and for the artillery tactic, meaning these battleships will continue to stay out of range. 
there can be some issues firing a tachyon lance due to its small firing arc at the front of only 25 degrees, but don't forget ships in Stellaris can pivot 180 degrees in mere seconds due to the quacky ship mechanics. So you still should be able to get off some tachyon lance shots. Last but by absolutely no means least when it comes to crisis factions, we have the Contingency, who are definitely entirely different to Mass Effect's Reapers. In many ways, the crisis ships of the Contingency are the hardest to build for when it comes to our ship designs. Their battleship class ships are the fastest crisis battleships we see in Stellaris, with a speed of 175. They are also equipped with a mixed balance of shields and armor but they do have relatively low hull points. A downgrade from our tachyon lance, plasma, and lasers. So they do generally suffer against shields. Their smaller sterilizer class ships still don't have very high tracking at only 44%. These again feature weapons that aren't very good against shields. We have neutron launchers, plasma cannons, and lasers. Again, there is an even balance between shields and armor with quite low hull. One surefire way to deal with the contingency is to run naked penetration battleships. No euphemism intended. These ships are equipped with an arc emitter that will fully bypass all shields and armor. Bypassing shields and armor is great because the crisis don't run shield or armor hardening. This means we can ignore those massive amounts of shield and armor and strike directly at the enemy ship. There are basically no good large or medium slot weapons that can complement the focused arc emitter and keep you at this maximum range of 110. Whilst Cloud Lightning is fully bypassed, it has a range of only 60. So if you put this on your ships, your ships will attempt to get into range of the enemy and then the enemy will be in range of them. That is not a situation you want to be in. Instead, we're going to fill up with advanced afterburners to boost our speed up to 235 here, meaning we will outclass the contingency when it comes to speed. I'm also going to be reducing my reactor down to only a level two reactor. We don't need that excess power. And this means this ship is very, very cheap when it comes to alloy cost. You will be paying a premium in naval capacity usage by having fleets of these, but they are much, much cheaper. You can run basically two to two and a half of these penetration battleships for every one battleship we looked at previously. Again, on higher levels of crisis difficulty, you will struggle when it comes to losses and replacing these battleships because you need twice as many of these to fill the same, to fill the same hole in your economy. It will take twice as many shipyard slots. And at that point in the game for you, shipyards will be at a premium. The last class I'm going to look at here, and I need to say a special thanks to Yernzax, who generally likes to play against very high levels of crisis difficulty and has basically settled on this design as the optimum to fight all three crisis factions, which is especially important when doing an all crisis run on 25 times difficulty. What we have here is a Tachyon Lance that is going to be great against the Scourge, okay against the Contingency, and it will struggle a bit against the Unbidden. Kinetic Artillery Batteries, they'll be great against the Contingency and Unbidden, but struggle just a bit against the Scourge. And Whirlwind Missiles, which will be great against the Contingency and the Unbidden, but struggle against the Scourge. We've gone for a mix of armor and shields, and then place three auxiliary fire controls. This will bring up your Tachyon Lance to 100% accuracy, meaning when we add in tracking from our sensors against all but those Scourge ships with high evasion, we'll be hitting basically every time. In terms of weight of numbers and sheer firepower, this is your best bet when coming up against a 150 times crisis. You need to build absolutely hundreds, if not thousands of these things, but you can do it. And given the range advantages you will have from the artillery combat computer, you shouldn't struggle with losses too much. But your game is definitely going to go to hell when it comes to lag. If you don't know what crisis you're going to come up against and you just want to build something that can fight against all three, this is probably your best bet. I would be remiss in my duty here if I didn't talk about an effective tactic you can use against the crisis. Here we have naked corvettes. We haven't put any shields or armor on these things and we have put just a few weapons just in case they ever make it into range. They have relatively low cost and their only purpose is to soak up enemy shots. What you should do with these corvettes 
is make sure they get into range of the enemy ships first, so your enemy's long-range weaponry, especially the contingency's long-range weaponry, those particle lances, strike the corvettes first. On 25 times difficulty and beyond, this means those particle lances will overkill your corvettes and then take time to recharge, allowing your own lances to shoot back and hopefully deal some crippling damage to the enemy. You could also just build fleets of these with shields to combat the unbidden, however your losses will be absolutely astronomical and trying to replace your corvettes will start being a challenge on higher level difficulties. The main thing you want to do when facing the crisis is minimize your own losses while still maximizing the damage output to the enemy. So I wouldn't generally recommend this corvette class on its own. The last two ship classes we need to talk about are the Titan and Juggernaut classes. These will be complementing and supporting your ships when facing the crisis. Of course, put down a perdition beam. These are great for dealing with crisis star bases, and then you might as well fill up on kinetic artillery. Shields and armor should be somewhat balanced, and then I'm going to recommend afterburners to keep the speed of this ship as high as possible. This is 235, basically equivalent to a battleship. There are only two modules you really want to put on your Titans though. There's no point in a shield dampener. At higher levels of difficulty, this will take off basically no shield points. You see, a 25 times crisis has a bonus of 2,500% to shields, so minus 20% puts them down to 2,480% bonus, which is basically 2,500%. All of the defensive auras will only benefit a single fleet, and you have a maximum, no matter how high your naval capacity, of only 20 titans so only 20 fleets could benefit from these bonuses. Instead, use offensive auras which target every enemy fleet in the system. The Quantum Destabilizer will always hurt any Crisis ship, no matter how high the difficulty level. That's because they don't get any bonus to their fire rate. Minus 10% is great. A Subspace Snare is also good because it will reduce the combat disengagement chance of the enemy and thus allow you to kill more Crisis ships. Alternating between these two on every Titan is probably your best bet. Last up we have the Juggernaut. Of course fill it up with regenerative hull tissue and armor, that way you should get at least some survivability out of it. You no longer need to be adding in much in the way of thrusters, you've already got quite a high base speed here of 177. I put a double tachyon lance, lots of strike craft and whirlwind missiles, as that's a fairly balanced damage output. Do go for a carrier combat computer, and then last, but by no means least, the most important thing here, and this is why you want to have a juggernaut with you every time you face the crisis, is to go with a target acquisition aura. That will grant a massive plus 40% ship's weapons range. When we combine that with the other weapons range bonuses, we can probably get two, possibly three salvos of our X-slot weapons off before the enemy can even get into range and fire their own weapons. If you've enjoyed this video on how to defeat the Crisis in detail, but you're wondering how to defeat other empires in the game, let me introduce you to the best ship class we have around, the Humble Cruiser. If you'd like to know more about cruiser design, click the video on screen now.